In the year 10,191, humanity can travel through space thanks to a valuable substance called spice, which is only found on a planet called Arrakis. The locals are known as freemen and are treated cruelly by the Empire because nobles have come to the planet to colonize and control the supply of spice. For many years the Harkonnen family was in charge of Arrakis, but one day the Emperor kicked the Harkonnens out and the Atreides family took over. However the Harkonnens never stopped plotting revenge and eventually send an attack on Arrakis to regain the leadership of the planet. Most of the Atreides family is killed except for the son Paul and his mother Jessica, who escape to the desert and meet with the freemen. Jessica belongs to the Bene Gesserit, an organization that has secretly made up a prophecy that makes some freemen believe Paul may be the chosen one who will save them from the Empire. Paul proves himself in a fight and the freemen agree to take them to their town. However everyone else in the universe thinks there are no members of the Atreides family left. The leader of the Harkonnen family Vladimir rewards his nephew Robin for completing the mission by putting him in control of the spice production on Arrakis. In the desert, Paul's group rushes to hide when they hear a spaceship drop a bunch of Harkonnen soldiers. They leave a body behind as bait and when the soldiers come closer, a thumper begins calling for the giant worms. The the Harkonners hear the noise and guess the plan, so they fly to the nearest rock formation. At that moment an eclipse makes the sky dark and the freemen use the chance to shoot at the soldiers with their laser weapons from afar. One of the soldiers comes down to check on the fallen bodies. So Paul rushes to steal a blade and starts fighting the guy, showing off great skills before killing him. A second soldier appears behind Paul, but Jessica immediately beats him to death with a rock. Once the battle is over, the freemen extract all the water from the dead bodies. Jessica suddenly throws up and the others think she's disgusted by the sight but she's secretly pregnant. Then all the soldiers' bodies are piled up and the freemen pull a giant worm to devour them. Meanwhile Robin is told that he should move his tropes away from freemen territories because they're losing too many men there. Furious, Robin begins beating up his assistant while yelling that they're losing men to rats. Eventually Paul's group reaches the freemen's town. Many people aren't happy to see Paul and are wary of him, but some locals believe the prophecy and bow to him. Stilgar tries to convince the council that Paul is the chosen one, but they don't take him seriously. Paul and Jessica are still given food, and the spice in the dish makes Paul have a vision he can't understand. Afterward Jessica is called to watch the ritual in which they extract the water from the warrior Paul killed and add it to a lake in the cave. Stilgar explains that this is one of thousands of water caches created by the freemen to help terraform the planet. Then he reveals their reverend mother is dying and they would like Jessica to take her place. Jessica accepts for the sake of helping Paul. She's taken to a cave where the reverend mother touches her face while the freemen outside pray. Next the freemen give the water of life to drink, explaining that the poison frees the soul and will kill her but will also help her see. Jessica takes a sip and immediately starts having a convulsion as the fetus inside her changes. As her eyes turn blue, the Reverend Mother realizes she's pregnant and calls the ritual a mistake. After the Reverend Mother dies, an argument ensues among the freemen. Some think it was a miracle that Jessica survived while pregnant and it proves the prophecy, while others think the prophecy is a lie created by the big families and that their savior shouldn't be an outsider. Paul interrupts the fight to explain his mother had been trained to survive poisons so it wasn't a miracle. He also says he has no intentions to lead and that he only wants to fight beside them, but his humility only makes Stilgar more sure that he's the chosen one. When Jessica wakes up, she tells Paul that the baby can now talk to her and that he should drink the water too. Sometime later Paul is given a tent and some food to make a trip through the desert so he can learn the freeman's ways. Paul carefully walks on the sand but he isn't very good at it, so Cheney joins him and teaches him how to improve his technique. She also teaches him many things about the desert and being a freeman, and as they start spending time together, they begin falling for each other. In town, Jessica continues to talk to her baby and begins planning how to make the non-believers change their minds. A few days later, a harvester appears in the desert to gather spikes. The freemen come out from their hiding spots in the sand for a surprise attack, killing a bunch of soldiers while moving expertly on the sand, which gives them an advantage. The enemy has also brought an aircraft along that opens fire on them, so the freemen rush to take cover under the harvester. Chaney and Paul come out and bring out two more soldiers, then Paul acts as bait to get the aircraft's attention on him and Chan brings it down with her laser gun. Now the way is open for more freemen to come out of hiding and shoot at the harvester at the same time finally destroying it. That night the group celebrates their victory and finally accepts Paul as part of the Freeman. They give him a warrior name and hug him as an official welcome. The next day Paul watches Stilgar ride a worm and takes off his family ring, accepting he isn't an Atreides anymore. Then Chaney joins him and they share a kiss. For the next few months, the group keeps traveling together through the desert and bringing down any harvester they can find, slowly causing great losses to House Harkonnen. When Vladimir hears about all this trouble, he kills two assistants in fury. He calls Robin to his chambers and informs him that if they keep on failing, the Emperor will take Spice out of their control. Robin must make things right or he'll be punished. Back to Paul, he wakes up from another nightmare. He tries to share it with Chaney but he doesn't remember much. He sees himself following a woman into war while hundreds of people die around them. Chaney tells him weird dreams are just a consequence of being exposed to Spice for so long. Afterward Paul gets ready for the Freeman's Rite of Passage, which consists of summoning and riding a sandworm. Paul tests the sand on a few spots until he finds the perfect place and puts down a thumper. Soon a worm bigger than usual appears, yet Paul isn't afraid. He jumps on top of it and using some hooks, he manages to hold onto the worm before he falls off. After some struggling, he gets on the right spot and connects the hook to start riding the worm properly 
Gaining the respect of the freemen, everyone cheers for him but some of them also bow since this is also part of the prophecy. The news quickly reaches Jessica, who asks her followers to spread the word. She decides to travel to the south to gather followers there, but Paul doesn't go with her. When he says goodbye, he realizes she's the woman in his dreams. Sometime later the freemen attack a spice depot, which destroys 80% of the enemy's harvest. Furious, Robin gathers his troops and flies to the desert to look for the freemen. They can't see them anywhere, but Robin makes his men shoot down the rocky formation anyway, causing a huge explosion and a thick dust fog. Then Robin and his soldiers leave their ships and begin walking through the fog, giving the freemen the chance to surround them and start killing them one by one. Terrified, Robin and his men try to escape. However the Freemen start shooting at the aircraft too. Robin barely manages to hold on and almost gets killed in the process. But a guard shoots the attacker off the ship and they get to escape. Meanwhile the Emperor is worried about the Freemen gaining power and his daughter Princess Irulan advises him to let the conflict turn into a full war. Later in private, Irulan tells Reverend Mother Helen that she suspects the Freemen's new prophet is Paul. Helen confirms it but tells her not to tell anyone, especially the Emperor. Because if the Great Houses find out about the massacre of the Atreides family, her father could lose the throne. She's also making plans for the Emperor's nephew Fade to take over Arrakis. Speaking of Fade, he's getting ready for a fight and tests his new blade on a servant, quickly killing her yet still complaining about the sharpness. At the same time, his opponents are given a mysterious injection and it's revealed they're three prisoners from the Atreides family. Then Fade enters the arena, where Vladimir and thousands of people have come to watch his battle on his birthday. He kills two of three opponents in just a few seconds, but the third one wasn't given the poison and offers a fair fight. Fade realizes he's being tested, so he takes off his bot shield to show off and continues to fight the prisoner, telling the guards not to help him. His opponent tries his best but Fade is still a better warrior and Fade kills him as well, gaining an ovation from the crowd. Later that day Fade complains to Vladimir about the trick, but Vladimir tells him he passed the test and can have a ruckus. Vladimir also explains he plans to bring down the Emperor and wants Fade to take over. On his way out, he notices he's being followed by Margot, a member of the Bene Gesserit. Fade realizes he's seen her in his dreams and Margot manipulates him into following her to her room and they get dirty together. The next day Margot informs Helen and Irulan that the bloodline has been secured because she's pregnant with Fade's child just as planned. At the same time Vladimir declares Fade the new governor of Arrakis. In the desert, a band of smugglers lands a harvester to gather some spice, but the Freemen immediately activate hidden mines and open fire to destroy all their equipment. Paul jumps on one of the smugglers, but he stops his attack when he notices it's Gurney, the warmaster that used to work for his family. Paul tells the others not to attack anymore and reunites with his old friend with a hug. Afterward Gurney and his men start traveling with Paul's group. Gurney tells Paul that he should use his power to control the Freemen and get revenge, but Paul is scared of doing so because his visions lead to a holy war with millions of deaths. Sometime later, Gurney reveals he knows where the Atreides family hid all their firepower. Paul starts seeing things different because all that power could help him get freedom for the Freemen. They tell the others and travel to the hidden cave, where only Paul's DNA can open the door. Inside they find 92 atomic warheads. In the meantime, Jessica arrives at the south and continues to spread the word about Paul's achievements. She also meets with the Maker Keeper, who shows her how the water of life is done. Inside a temple, the Keeper summons a baby sandworm that she drowns in a small lake to then extract its poison. When the poison is done, Jessica uses her power to force the Keeper to share the water with Paul when he comes, which is forbidden. Sometime later, Paul finds Chenny staring at the sun and discovers her face is burnt. Suddenly he wakes up and finds all the Freemen looking around because they can hear explosions. It turns out Fade is attacking their town, effectively bringing it down with heavy artillery shot from aircraft. When Robin arrives he confronts his brother Fade for taking his place but Fade quickly knocks him down and forces him to kiss his feet. Then Fade meets with a friend of Cheney's who was captured during the attack, but since she refuses to share any information, she gets killed. Back to Paul's group, they rush back to their town to help the few people that managed to survive the attack. They receive a message from the south saying the leaders are gathering to discuss the situation, but Paul refuses to go because he's afraid of his visions. When he touches the sand, he has the same terrible visions again, but Cheney convinces him they have no choice if they want to survive. The entire group rides a bunch of sandworms and finally make their way to the south. Paul enters the temple and the keeper gives him the water of life, which he drinks without hesitation. He has a vision of his future sister standing on a beach and telling him the truth about their family. By the time the rest of the group arrives at the temple, Paul's vitals are so low that he looks dead. Chaney is furious and tells Jessica she should fix it, but Jessica uses her power on Chaney to force her to finish the ritual. Chaney combines her tear with a small amount of the water of life, then she drops the liquid on Paul's lips to make him wake up. Everyone bows because they consider this a miracle, but Chaney slaps Paul and then leaves in a hug. Afterward in private, Paul explains to Jessica he can see all the futures and understand the past. He's also seen his entire bloodline and learned that Jessica is Vladimir's daughter. Jessica claims she didn't know either until she drank the water. Paul announces that if they're Harkonnens then they shall fight as them, marking the beginning of Paul's descent from savior to tyrant. Paul then makes his way to the war council, 
where all the freemen are praying. Cheney tries to tell them they're being manipulated by the prophecy and that this will end up badly, but nobody believes her. As Paul walks to the middle of the room, the locals discuss if Stilgar should die so Paul can take his place as a leader, but Paul yells at them for wanting to get rid of a fantastic warrior. Then he offers a grand speech, talking about himself as a prophet and surprising everyone by mentioning things from a random person's past he only knows thanks to the water. Everyone is impressed and falls to their knees again, accepting Paul as their leader for good. Then Paul puts on his father's ring again, calls himself the Duke of Arrakis, and promises to bring green paradise for the freemen. Everyone except for Chani Chance's name, ready to fight for it. Moments later, the Emperor receives a message from Paul challenging him for the throne. In private, Helen tells Irulan that her father will lose the throne no matter who prevails, but her family can remain in power if Irulan marries the victor. Sometime later, the Emperor's army arrives at Arrakis. Paul makes a plan with the Freeman and reminds them to capture the Emperor alive. Vladimir sees the arrival too and tells Fade to warn all the great houses. Soon the Emperor meets with Vladimir and his nephews to demand information, but since Vladimir knows nothing about what's happening in the south, the Emperor makes a guard punish him. At that moment the Freeman open fire, destroying the enemy's shields thanks to the atomic warheads and causing sand to blow everywhere providing cover. They also set up a bunch of thumpers to summon an army of worms, which they ride right into battle to kill hundreds of soldiers at the same time. Many freemen come out of the sand as well, attacking from behind structures so the enemy is surrounded on all sides. The soldiers try to fight back but they aren't used to the desert and their loss is inevitable. Soon the freemen make their way inside and Paul walks through the room without anyone reacting because they are protecting the emperor. Paul finds Vladimir trying to crawl away, and after calling him grandfather, he kills him. On his way out, he tells the others to feed Vladimir's body to the desert and take everyone prisoner. For the next few hours, the battle carries on and the freemen are clearly winning. Robin tries to escape, but Gurney finds him and challenges him, killing him in just a few seconds as revenge for losing his duke and friends. The battle ends that night and all the bodies are burned down except for Vladimir's, who is thrown in the sand. The next morning, Paul learns that the Great House's ships are above them, waiting to attack. He gets Gurney to send a warning, saying that if they don't honor his ascendancy and attack him, their warheads will obliterate the spice field. Then Paul announces he'll marry Irulan so they can rule together, but he wants the Emperor to answer for the massacre of his family. The Emperor refuses to negotiate, so he gives Fade his blade and chooses him to represent him in a fight. Paul calls Fade cousin and the duel begins. Both men are amazing warriors and the fight is pretty equal, but soon Fade knocks Paul down and mocks him while calling Cheney his pet. Refusing to give up, Paul attacks again, and in just a few moves Fade manages to stab him twice. However this was a trick by Paul who has made himself vulnerable to bring Fade close and stab him right in the heart, killing him. As the Freeman chant Paul's name, Irulan has no choice but to accept the marriage and give Paul the throne. Paul extends his hand and forces the Emperor to kiss his ring, causing everyone to bow. Upset, Cheney leaves the room while Gurney informs them that the Great Houses have answered that they'll honor Paul. In the end, Paul orders Stilgar to take the Freeman to paradise. Cheney doesn't join them and goes to the desert to escape on a worm. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.